We're just taking a quick walk right now. We're gonna show you the covered area that the boat's gonna go in while we're painting the deck. So where I am standing right now is where Freebie is going to be for her paint job. Randy for scale. I can't wait till we move in there. Basically, we're gonna get the boat 100% watertight before we move out of it. Have the deck done, poor lights done, That'd everything so rebedded. Nice. Yeah, it'd the be really nice. Lights. We did a great tape job, but they do leak. It, it does leak, it does leak. So hopefully we won't have any more leaks after that. Then we can get started on the interior of the boat and that's gonna be a lot of fun. It'll be hard work, but we'll be inside an air-conditioned boat. No complaints. No complaints. So we're back in the boat right now and nice and cool in here, hot outside. We're gonna wait a couple hours and then we're gonna start getting the boat ready. Yeah. You know, for the mast to come down. I had to make so. sure all of the turn buckles turn. Yep. There was something else. Oh, I have to deal with the in-mast furling, the line for that. You have to tie that up. To do with it. And then we gotta remove the boom, so. Oh yeah, that. So everything's gotta Mind be ready. Detail. And source, maybe source some blocks too to put the mast yeah. on. But, you know, it's gonna happen tomorrow morning. It's gonna be exciting. Yep. And then we'll have to get all the stanchions and everything off the boat. You know, hopefully we'll start sanding by the weekend and we'll be sanding and sanding and sanding. And then we should be ready to go into the cover on, on Monday. Monday. I just taped the location of the turnbuckles on the back stay here, just on the threads right there, so that when we loosen them up tomorrow and remove the mast, the rigging shop, probably Seco South, will know exactly how long to make everything to replicate it. The last time our rigging was replaced, I believe, was in 2004 by a previous owner. So, you know, that's more than 10 years. It's more than, you know, going on 15 years. So, I think it's about time. If we're gonna be doing some extended cruising on this boat, I think it definitely needs to be replaced. So that's the only way that's gonna fit in there. Oh, let's see. <laughs> okay, I was like, you're just standing. It's like a hot box in that trailer. All right, guys, the boom is gone. As you can see, all of the turnbuckles are marked. Yes. And I think the last thing that we need to do before that we can pull the mast tomorrow is make sure all the turnbuckles turn. Yep. So the yard told us just to make sure they turn. So I think we're gonna pull the actual cotter pins just maybe turn them a little bit, and then it'll be ready for tomorrow. Do you think we should pull the cotter pins though? I think so, because it'll save time for tomorrow. There's no reason why they need to be in right now. Sure. Mass isn't gonna Positive. fall down. Mass isn't gonna fall down. They're just gonna spin wildly overnight. And yep, exactly. All right, I guess not. So we're pulling the cotter pins. I'm not worried about scratching any of this, because we're gonna be replacing it anyway, but I was able to loosen it up a couple threads. Uh, so this one's good, it's ready for tomorrow. And I'm now dripping in sweat, but basically doing almost nothing, even though because it's Florida and that's what happens. You walk outside for five seconds and you're drenched in sweat. I'm gonna go do the same thing to the shrouds, loosen up like one or two threads, and then we'll be good for tomorrow for the mask to come down. I can't wait. I know, so exciting. We're struggling a little bit with the last ones. We had to break out the WD-40, but they got it to work, so all about that. I've heard some people say that you're never supposed to use WD-40 on a boat. I don't know why, so if you know why, please let me know. Yeah, we didn't have PB Blaster around. We, we just PB had WD-40. I figured if I ruined my turnbuckle or somehow, I don't think it would, but if it did for some reason, we're replacing, we're replacing it, it. So, but it worked. I had never heard that though. You've actually heard that? I've heard, yeah, I've heard people say never use WD-40 on a boat. And I cannot remember why. That's very interesting. So, yeah. if you know why, or if that's just a bunch of horse crap, <laughs> let me know in the comments. Alright, so we're sitting here in the boat, waiting for the crane to come. It's going 
to come pull our mast. They said about 11 a.m. It's 11.08 a.m. But they said around that time. They didn't say it was a hard, hard time. So, you know, we're just sitting here and everything's ready. We got blocks for the for the mast down below. We've got all the turnbuckles turned, so they're loosened a little bit. The boom is off. Everything's ready for the crane. This is going to be a, a lot better than when we did it ourselves. When we did it ourselves, <laughs> hopefully. So. Oh God, hopefully, yeah. Alrighty, so our cars are moved out of the way. Here's the bow of the boat. Got a nice area for the crane to come in. Pull the mast. Got the blocks down there. Alrighty guys, so the mast is gone. The boat looks really weird, but it's kind of cool at the same time. So now what we have to do is basically remove all of the stays from the mast. We're going to remove the spreaders as well and pretty much remove anything that's easy to get off and put all of that into the trailer. And then we're going to see about taking that mast, picking it up maybe with me and Randy and see if we can tuck it alongside the boat. and. Basically, the yard said it just has to be out of the way so when they come pick the boat up on Monday to put it in the covered area, the mast isn't in the way. So, pretty simple. That's our, that's our job for today and if we get through with that, we're going to start removing stanchions. So, I went around to each of the shrouds and I labeled them so like this one says starboard, lower, forward. So, we know it's on the starboard side, it's the lower stay and it is the forward one on the boat. Now, why is that helpful? because we are going to get these remade and we want them to be measured like exactly and we want to know exactly which one goes back in which place. Yep, so when it, the mask goes back up, hopefully there won't be any snafus. Yeah. So she's working on the lowers there. We've been doing pretty good removing everything, you know, with hand tools and everything like they're supposed to come off, but a couple little screws and everything like this are seized, so sometimes it's just time to break out the Dremel. Yay. Easy peasy. So we took off all of the old rigging that's over here, kind of wound it up. We're getting ready to send that to Seco South so that hopefully we can get some new rigging made. Um, we took all the accessory type things off of the mast, including the topping lifts, bars, all of that good stuff. And we are going to now move this so that it is out of the way for the trailer when they trailer in new boats or trailer out boats. So they're ready to go back in the water. Right now it's kind of in the way. Check it out. The mast is in its spot. Nice and out of the way in between two boats so they can come and pick up our boat and move it under the cover on Monday and the mast is not in the way. So, um, The reason you didn't see the last few feet of movement is because our memory card was full. Yep. And that mast weighs a lot more than I thought it did. Yeah. I'm used to the, the O'Day mast weighed like 80 pounds. It wasn't yeah. heavy at all. This thing, I think, is probably around 300, maybe maybe more. I don't know. It's 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 really heavy, um, and I think that's mainly because it's really heavy duty because the in-mast furling. But yeah. we ended up, you know, using leverage to our advantage, and you know, you saw it. Obviously, we just did it slowly, <laughs> slowly, slowly, slowly. Worked out. But now all we got to do is clean up. Move the furler. And I think we earned our lunch today. So, all right, guys. Our like four o'clock lunch. Yeah. We earned our lunch dinner. So we've started pulling stuff to pull stanchions. Unfortunately, all of the 
nuts to loosen the stanchions basically all over the boat are hidden behind multiple panels that you have to take off and it's just really annoying they're not accessible but you know if you look behind me here we've already pulled this this panel off and we have to pull this one off behind me so then we'll have access to the stanchions and the chain plates here on the starboard side The screws to hold this in were hidden under these like little teak accent pieces. So as you can see right there, there's a screw hole. That makes no sense. <laughs> so you have to unscrew the teak accent piece to get to the screw hole to remove the panel so that you can get to the stanchion bases and as well as the chain plates. So it's like they expected no one to ever rebed the stanchions or you know even inspect the chain plates. The good thing is we're going to keep these teak accent pieces. We're not going to use them for the same purpose, but might be using them for some trim, different things where we need like a little piece of teak here and there. So that's good. It's just extra teak and it's actually in good shape. When we replace these panels, it's just going to be solid white vinyl on marine gray plywood. We're not going to put these on there. I think they look kind of a little bit tacky. I like the teak trim, but I just don't like these lines of teak. I think I feel like if you're going to do this, you might as well put teak all the way through, not just have like a panel of a teak. I don't know. I'm ranting. That, I believe, is really old rat poop. Yummy. I've got